Welcome back to my channel. My name is Munif Ali. I'm here to empower you so that you can obtain financial and personal development goals. If you like this type of content, make sure you apply a little bit of liberal pressure to that like and subscribe button to let that algorithm know that I exist and that I have content that you want. Did you know that 40 to 90% of what we do are due to our habits? This is according to various studies conducted by neurobiologists, cognitive psychologists, and others from similar fields. If this is true, this means that most of our actions from what we say to how we think are practically on autopilot. For instance, have you ever experienced waking up and already having a cup of coffee in your hand before you even knew it? Or maybe you suddenly find yourself in a bathroom even without really realizing it. Habits are activities we do unconsciously and often being controlled by our subconscious mind. And as a result, we do things on autopilot and tend to miss out on being present in the moment. It is okay for simple routine-based activities like making coffee or going to the bathroom as soon as you wake up. However, maybe it'll be problematic if your habits were somehow incorporated in your work. For instance, when you get to the office, you first check emails instead of looking at important tasks, or you often experience forgetfulness like the discussions you just had with your boss, or where you stopped at your task before. Working on autopilot pilot will significantly affect the quality of your life and work. And remember that habits can either be bad or can be good. You could do activities deliberately and incorporate them into your life, but now they serve no purpose. But we just continue these activities because they're already deeply ingrained in our subconscious and thus our routine. Once you look closely at these habits, you could realize that things can be learned, unlearned, or replaced. And in today's video, I will introduce to you powerful habits that will positively change your life. Number one, surround yourself with positive people. Anthony Robbins once says, proximity is power. The simple act of whom you spend your time with is who you become. This means the kind of people you surround yourself could greatly influence you. Studies also show that being exposed to other people's emotions during social interactions, people tend to also copy emotional expression from others as well. I remember seeing a social experiment on one of the social media platforms years ago where a guy in the video is in a new neighborhood. When he first encounters his neighbor on the street, they have a I don't care about this person type of attitude where they wear a blank expression or won't even look them in the eye. So the guy started smiling and saying hello to neighbors whenever he would see them and the opposite started to happen. He would do it every single day. In a few days, all of the neighbors around him would smile at him and say hi every time they had that encounter. And even if he didn't say hi to them, they would go out of their way to smile and greet him. So the point of the experiment was to prove just how smiling is contagious. But even centuries ago, there were already similar studies and research, not only about the smile, but emotional contagion as a whole. Most of those studies have concluded that human beings are naturally susceptible to catching other people's emotions. Emotions. So if you surround yourself with people that have negativity written all over their face, there's a great chance that you will also start to mimic their negative emotions and behavior. That's how important it is to surround yourself with people who look with a positive outlook on life, who radiate optimism, who will lift you when you're in trouble and give you honest and without malice solutions to your problems. Spend as much time as possible with them, learn their strategy in life, and try to apply those strategies to yours. I'm not telling you to dump all your negative friends, family members, and relatives all at once. It's just not practical to do so and sometimes it's unrealistic but try to limit your exposure to them by spending less time with them sometimes so you too don't take in their negativity number two is to invest in self-care did you know that 59 percent of americans find it very difficult to have work-life balance this is according to one poll on behalf of h and r block according to the survey on average most participants claim to only have 26 minutes of free time during the week and that's literally jack all work and no play well i understand that with all the technological advances and robots replacing human beings and a top of increased prices for essential goods, the world is rapidly changing and we feel the urgency to keep up with all of it. So let's say you're sleeping about eight hours a day. Then you have 112 working hours a week, which would be about 6,720 minutes a week. And you only have 26 minutes of free time. That's less than 1% of your waking hours. Can you imagine that? It is good that we want to be successful and provide for yourselves and your family. But that kind of lifestyle is counterproductive. When you keep on working without taking a break, it will just be a matter of time before you break down physically and mentally. So go ahead, take a break. It could mean a simple thing as stepping outside for a walk during your lunch hour or doing something you love to do in your free time. For instance, watch some movies, listen to some music, dance, do anything other than work. You'll be surprised how much your productivity will also improve. You'll feel refreshed and have the energy you need to be productive at work. Number three, take a break from social media. According to Pew Research Center, 82% of American adults aged 30 and younger use social media. They use this as a social interaction, seeking information, entertainment, relaxation, 
conversation or to just pass time. But many of the younger ones claim that they use social media because of the fear of missing out or FOMO. Social media platforms are not entirely evil as they let us connect with loved ones regardless of time zones. However, things get worse when you become too absorbed in it. Did you know that whenever you receive a like or a comment on your post or picture, it's hijacking your dopamine pathway more quickly than getting the reward for your hard work. This means that you get that rush of dopamine comparable to smoking a cigarette. And this is why it's highly addictive. This also leads to excessive concern for one's body, appearance, or lifestyle, or career. And frequently, it leads to anxiety, stress, and in some cases, depression. For you not to get to that point, it's important that you take a break from social media. Detox your mind from all the things happening out there and reconnect connect with the world around you. I definitely need to teach my kids this one. Number four is to practice gratitude. The power of the mind is a lot more powerful than you might think. Shifting your focus of your thoughts from the things that you lack to appreciating what you have is powerful in the way you look at your life. It will help you focus more on positive emotions and immerse yourself in good experiences. You can practice gratitude in different ways. For example, applying it to your present, such as appreciating the things you have right now, like having a good paying job despite the increasing unemployment rate or to your past, for instance, being grateful for being able to finish college or having great and loving parents or to our future, such as having the optimistic attitude towards having a better life. You can start by allotting a few minutes of your time, let's say as soon as you wake up and write down in your notebook or even in your phone, the three things that you're grateful for today. I do an exercise called the 1010. Well, I actually do 10 things, but I've kind of slowly grown to do that type of number. It could be anything, simple act of waking up or the nice weather, being able to have your loved ones around you. Do it every day and you'll be surprised how positivity can impact your life. Number five, is a healthy morning routine. Remember, your morning routine will greatly influence your mood for the rest of the day. So set it right and you'll be on track. After all, depending on how you start your day, it will increase or break your productivity as suggested by some of the productivity coaches out there. But I think many people fail in this simple task because they treat it as something like checking off a to-do list. But instead of feeling good, they get burdened by it, seeing they can't check off more every morning. And instead of thinking of it as starting your day with a positive attitude of peace and confidence, it starts to become a task. I'm not gonna suggest what type of activity you should do every morning because what might work for me might not work for you. Instead, think of an activity or activities that will give you a positive feeling as soon as you do it. Personalize it to your liking and preferences and then do it consistently. Well, now we've reached the end of the list, but before I go, I would like to ask you guys, what among the habits that I mentioned is your favorite and why? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Unlearning bad habits and replacing them with good ones will never be an easy journey, but still, you must try and do it now if your goal is to have a positive change in your life. And as a bonus for staying with me until the end, here's a tip. Incorporate a reward with your habit. After making a positive habit, getting a reward will reinforce it with a positive emotion. For instance, if you want to wake up early, tell yourself if you did it, you can have that slice of cake or that good cup of premium coffee. Experiment with it and see what works for you. Give yourself a reward immediately after you've done the activity. This will send a signal to your brain that the activity is tied to a result and they come together. That's all for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed and found value in this video. If you did, go ahead and please hit the thumbs up and click on the subscribe button and notification bell. If you want to learn more about productivity, look at this video next. This could be the reason why you procrastinate.